Uh, Senator, great to see you as always. Your Thank thoughts you. on yes, the, the, the sort of different factions that we're seeing at play here. During the day, you have peaceful protesters saying we want more social equality. Um, you know, we want justice for the death of George Floyd. And that is completely understandable, and they're well within their right to do it. But then at night, you've seen the pictures in Washington, D.C., in Minneapolis, in Los Angeles, here in New York City, when the violence starts to occur. How do you reconcile those two? They're, they're not the same groups. Well, they're not even of the same world. And there's no doubt that George Floyd deserves justice. And I am thankful for uh, folks who are protesting in the vein of John Lewis, who, because of his peaceful demonstrations, led to social transformation that our country embraced. And frankly, we are doing better because of it. When you look at the violent agitators, they should not even be considered in the same uh, conversation with the peaceful protesters. Peaceful protesters are selfless. Violent agitators are selfish. They're taking all of the focus and putting it on themselves. And frankly, the best picture I've seen lately are peaceful protesters and police officers forming a line to protect businesses. That's what America is about. That's what makes America great. It's when people come together who may have some tension even and work together for a better outcome, but the violent protesters... They're getting too much air already. We should suck the oxygen out of that room because it is not in our long-term best interest. It's not in our short-term best interest. It's only a distraction from making progress for Americans. And let's talk about the George uh, Floyd case specifically. All four officers arrested, um, they will have to answer for what happened that night. So the question is, if justice is going to be served, how does the healing process begin? I'll tell you, the healing process begins. Uh, we have had experience with that in South Carolina after the Walter Scott murder. Uh, myself and Congressman Trey Gowdy started bringing African Americans and law enforcement officers together to have a conversation, no cameras, no press, just having conversations. And what ultimately occurred were that black leaders started doing ride-alongs with officers to realize that there's no such thing as a normal traffic stop. We had uh, police officers that spent some time in the African-American communities to understand some of the pains and challenges. And so when we have lines of communication that are bridged, we get better outcomes. And frankly, one of the things that Trey has said, and I like to take credit for it, even though he said it, was it's hard to hate up close. It's hard to hate what you know. And that is a simple step. There's no law that we can pass that says we're going to figure out how to legislate the a heart. That's not going to happen. But what we can do is make significant progress. And what we're doing now is having a serious conversation about the next steps. Things like giving us a, a purview into what's going on around the country. Let me give you an example of a piece of legislation that we're working on, the George Floyd Notification Act. When use of force leads to death, let's figure out are there patterns, get more information so that we can help uh, fund the right programs, the right training, the right uh, opportunities to help law enforcement officers and members of the community go home to their families in a very safe way. Martin Luther King Jr.'s niece, Alveda King, joined us last night. She had this to say about the anarchists, about Antifa, the other violent actors trying to steal the narrative here um, for their own selfish purposes. Listen. Martin Luther King Jr. said that violence is immoral, it's unreasonable, it doesn't work, and it certainly is disrespectful for people like Antifa to come in and others. I've been seeing clips from people in New York saying, how can you come into my city, burn my property? The officer that was shot trying to protect someone's uh, store, and it's just terrible. However, I don't want people to give up. We need to still have hope and still unify, and I'm sure we can do it. Enough is enough. You're bullies. You must stop. We're going to stay in. We're going to pray in. And Antifa, you and your kind have to stop and leave our communities. Quick reaction to that. Give the sister an amen. Bottom line, that is what I'm talking about. Uh, there's no doubt that the organized element in the protest, the violent protest, is clearly attached to some organization. We need to root it out and yeah. get rid of it. Thank you so much for your time tonight. Great to see you as always. Thank you, Jackie. All right.
Uh, one second. Just stay with us for one second. A Fox Business alert. TMZ reporting that Roger Goodell admits that the NFL bungled kneeling protests saying, quote, we the NFL condemn racism and the system systematic oppression of black people. We the NFL admit that we were wrong for not listening to NFL players earlier and encourage all to speak out and peacefully protest. We the NFL believe black lives matter. Senator, are you still with us? I'm still here. Yes, ma'am. Your reaction to that? Well, I'm not quite sure what Roger is talking about. We should all respect the flag. We should respect the foundation of this country. And we should re respect the fact that it's this nation that allows for peaceful protesters to be heard. And our country typically responds in kind. Great to see you. Thank you.